Welcome to Exploring the Marketplace. I'm Bob Hassan with Sean Bowles. Sean, who do we have on today? You know, we have a friend of mine who actually is creating a show and it's already on podcast form about exorcism. And it's actually from a Catholic church point of view. Wow. It's an agnostic, a Protestant and a Catholic making a podcast together. And it's already hit number one, Bob, on Spotify worldwide. And it's hit wow. number one and two in the Christian categories as well. But in number one in all categories when it first launched, which is just wow. incredible. It shows you the hunger of a million people listening. And he's just a fascinating person. I think you as our audience are going to love Ryan Bethe. Welcome to Exploring the Marketplace. My co-host is Bob Hassan, and we are creating a conversation with Christian marketplace leaders who have careers that have been impacted by their faith. We are also answering your questions about entrepreneurship, business leadership, careers, and how the kingdom of God changes your impact in the marketplace. Well, welcome back. We're here with Ryan Bethay. Ryan, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. This is uh, this is like the most fun thing I've gotten to do today, and it's already nine thirty. <laughs> well, I'm excited that you're on. You, you obviously were just recently featured on our uh, My Shambles News Commentary Show, and we talked to you and your priest friend, which is amazing because you guys have that amazing podcast, The Exorcist Files. But I want to get right into it because I've known you for many years, and you're. Uh, serial entrepreneur and a creative, and you've done things that not many people in our friendship circle have accomplished. And you've also lent your strength and served so many of your friend community to help them to become greater, which is just so phenomenal in the LA kind of Southern California based area. Kind of talk to us about your journey, like where did it start in business? Cause you've, as long as I've known you, you've always had businesses you've been involved with, you're in a long-term one now that you've started. Talk to us about your life right now. What does it look like? Uh, well, life is very strange. I actually, uh, I had a friend text me a picture the other day from a presentation in Dallas where a buddy of mine had taken a, a photo of me just for some stock photo and used it. And my friend said, Hey, dude, you're on the wall. And two people raised their hand and said, is that the demon guy? So I'm like, <laughs> that's a, that's a snapshot apparently into my, my life right now. But, uh, no, you know, I've been really blessed to have a very unorthodox career path and, uh, something, you know, that I've really thought about as I've, you know, cross that threshold into the mid late thirties is just thinking back on, you know, what would, what would I tell young Ryan? And if I look back and I trace the career and the yeah. coolest thing is, is that you just never know. I am a big independent self-reliant, you know, do your own thing. I look back and some of the biggest wins, uh, the, the biggest one I have right now uh, was I joke, despite my best efforts has been a huge success. And, uh, wow. and so if you would ask me 12 years ago, or just come to me and said, by the way, I know it's a little frustrating. You don't like the sales gigs you're doing right now and you see them all over the place. But in about 13 years, you're going to have a show approaching, uh, you know, roughly a million listeners uh, that, uh, you know, is featuring case files from a lead exorcist of the Vatican. I would have said, uh, right. You know, Ryan, I think it's interesting. We, are, we put our plans together. We do the best we can. And then we yield ourselves to God and, and he surprises us. How do you remain flexible uh, with all the things, your business, and then all these other projects that you have in yielding to God to figure out like, which, which direction am I going? My biggest prayer right now daily is that my heart would be aligned with what uh, God would like to partner with me on. Uh, and it's, it's a big posture shift. Cause you know, when you're first starting off and went to USC, graduated all the ambition in the world, you know, plans on becoming the next Musk and Bill Gates combined and a pastor and, and, <laughs> and you realize quickly that, Oh, like life throws you some different curveballs, et cetera. And so I am trying to actively lay that down and just rest and, and say, Hey, like, what is, what am I supposed to do? Because the, and a lot of this came through, I was really blessed when I graduated to get involved in a small group and a pastor led us to this exercise of creating a mission statement. Right. Um, and, um, and you'd go through, it's almost like a doctoral dissertation and you think yeah. through and you carve out and you present it to your group and you say, okay, this is what, to the best of my faculties, I think this is what I am about. And the question is, who am I? What am I, uh, what am I made to do? And what am I going to do about it? And when we developed those statements, it became this rubric to say, okay, cause you're going to have no shortage of cool opportunities. So I take that framework and I try everything that comes my way. I run it through my mission statement and say, is that what I'm about? Time of trying to figure it out when there are so many opportunities, like you just talked about, you had to learn what to say yes to. A lot of what you were saying yes to, you know, it's, it's not, they don't immediately happen or bear fruit. They don't immediately like come to fruition. Talk to us about the journey of like doing multiple things at the same time and the grace of like pushing into the grace of God on things when it's time. 
and knowing that it's okay to let things go when it's not time. Because there are some things that you've told me about maybe four or five years ago. This is what I'm doing right now. And those aren't what you're doing right now, but what you're doing right now is better for you right now. But I could still see those things coming back around. So like talk yeah. about the maybe the orbiting of God for, for opportunities. <laughs> <laughs> now I, uh, so one, I was, my, one of my favorite verses in scripture is Proverbs 16, nine, and it's uh, a man's heart chooses the way, but the Lord directs his steps. Yes. Uh, yeah. And that interplay was so fascinating for me because uh, you're right. Like I would go back and I would grab my younger self by the shoulders and just stress go and go Ryan, like get good at one thing. Don't be the person all over the place. Don't stretch yourself too thin. That's, that's a regret I have. Honestly, I, I did too much, but God's mercy. And that's the, and there's a beautiful, I actually, uh, John Tyson, pastor Tyson, uh, I asked him this on a show one time and said, can you waste your life? And he goes, absolutely. And I went, wow. Oh, okay. Is that beautiful Australian accent? He's like, that's not the question, man. The question is, can God redeem your life? Oh, and he's like, yes. Can God turn the clock back? Can God make up for the, you know, the lack of focus? And I want to encourage anyone who's thinking about starting a business, et cetera, like, the myth is that you can forecast all this. And I literally had a friend say, I feel like you should meet this person. And I'd shop this show all over town. Um, and as a TV show, it just wasn't landing yet. It was also during COVID. So there's a lot of question marks and speculation sure. about budgets. And I had a friend say, hey, I want you to meet this person. Um, and I connected with them. And they said, I think you should meet uh, iHeartRadio, who is our, our partner with it now. And two days later, we had a deal. You know, so again, I can't prove it's God, but hey, if he's involved, I sure like it goes a lot faster with God uh, as my agent than my actual agent, even though I love my actual agent. So. <laughs> love Ryan, you. <laughs> no, Ryan, I think it's interesting. I'm, I'm a big forecaster and strategic planner, but tempered with that is the reliance on God's plan. And every time I look back on my forecasts and plans, uh, the same thing happens, what you said. I got to where I was going, but in a different way than I had written down. And it, 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 it's funny every single time to look back at it. How would you talk to our listeners and viewers about how to rest in God in the midst of the upheaval and the ups and downs of the entrepreneurship and business and, and, and on, your, on your other projects? I remember I was actually reading a, a biography by Ronald Reagan, uh, or his biography, and there's a part at the end where he's got his feet up on the desk in the Oval Office, just relaxing on a Sunday afternoon. And he said, and he was just musing. And he said, you know, if I had gotten what I wanted, I would have been manager of a sporting goods store. Right. And I would have married my high school girlfriend. And I would never be sitting in the White House today. Thank God I didn't get what I wanted. And wow. the words like jumped off the page at wow. me and it humbled me. And I said, you know, all right, if God is real and he loves me and there's a plan for me, then it's possible that he's protecting me, that these setbacks are actually, um, these what seem like limitations are actually uh, chains being broken and actually are freedom for me. And so I said, Lord, I'm sorry. And whatever you want, I got it. And so uh, to y'all's question about the anxiety, et cetera, is that I really try to consider when something doesn't happen the way I would hope so, um, I am hoping and leaning on the fact that it may just be God knows what I can handle. And doing this exorcist file show has been one of the most difficult things I've done from a mental, psychological and, and, you know, and spiritual and even creative exercise. And I think, man, I wanted a big TV show. But yeah, you know, when you start reading, because you know, we get a lot of great reviews, we also get some negative ones. And I go, you're warm. It's good. I'm so thankful God warmed me up on a podcast instead of on a national. He knows what like yeah. I can handle. And so I am grateful and I tell folks, hey, if you have anxiety about this, just just know that it may be not now. I know, and I may have yeah. something better for you. And I really, really believe that. That's good. Well, it's, it's interesting too, because you went after, um, if I recall right, it was about miracles. You were going to actually yeah. document miracles even with the Vatican. And then it turned into, you're actually going after exorcism and deliverance. Uh, you know, we had an increase of over 700% of people after COVID asking for deliverance in the Protestant church. And there was a 97% increase in the Catholic church. And so people were wanting, because they can feel spiritual warfare. They don't just feel normal trauma from what's happening. They're all also feeling a spiritual dynamic. And this is what Jesus died for. So he could set us free. And so I think it's really beautiful. And so we could become sons and daughters of God. You have to actually look at these cases because you're producing it. And you actually have to read some of the darkest facts, like stuff that I wouldn't want to read necessarily. And so how are you handling that as far as like here you have, that's that's a pretty dramatic thing to have to look at someone's 
need for deliverance and the demonic stuff that's happening in their lives. I actually had a, a, a pastor friend say, aren't you scared about the spiritual warfare? And I'm like, well, that's not a reason not to do something. Uh, it's, you know, <laughs> if, it, if, cause if it's true, it's whether you attribute these cases to spiritual warfare or severe mental illness, it's still a very heavy subject. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are dealing with terrible, terrible problems in their lives. And it's, it's horrible. So whether you believe it or not, these people are suffering and yeah. just engaging with suffering on a daily basis uh, is really, uh, it's tough. And I have learned I've had to be much more um, rigorous about defending life rhythms and taking Sabbath and resting because uh, one, it's very easy to get caught up on a 24 seven cycle of reviews and feedback and marketing opportunities, but also just this stuff takes a toll. It's like Frodo carrying the ring. You get you start studying spiritual warfare through a podcast like this. You know, there's a lot of things that don't make sense. There will be some things that seem logical. And there'll be some things that break your box and well, that you don't like, it doesn't make sense mm -hmm. to me. And it breaks my box. Uh, and so I go, Okay, uh, what, what does that mean? And so I've had to take those thoughts captive and just go out there and just say, look, I, uh, and really uh, one thing that I've learned a lot, I've read a lot of Charles Kraft um, while doing this and his, uh, he's big on taking authority in your prayer life and your, um, and your mental state and just speaking yeah. out loud constantly. All right. I am like, let's just, let's go to the truth of these things. Right. And people always ask me, aren't you scared? Like, I don't want this to be real. And I was like, no, 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 you should want this to be real because if these evil critters are true and if these stories are true, then the other side is so infinitely more powerful. If this is real and you have, uh, and Jesus is your Lord and Savior, then you got, you can respect the presence of evil, but you don't have to fear it. Well, uh, how can people uh, listen? I know it's on iHeartRadio I and also what else do you want to bring our attention to? Because you're doing so much. So it's on Spotify, Apple, Amazon, wherever you get your podcast. You can go to exorcistfiles.tv. You can check it out. Uh, we just say, look, we're not, you don't have to believe everything the priest says, right? This is a, like a true crime theology hybrid. I, if you want to take it as entertainment, you get whatever. I'm, we're not here to uh, tell you what to believe on this. Just go check it out and just decide, ask, research, ask around. Um, I just like to leave people with the stat that, you know, roughly 90% of the world believes in a spiritual paradigm. So mm -hmm. it is for us to say, oh, I just dismiss all claims of all spiritual activity. Uh, you know, that is putting us in the minority right? It's, it's, there's a lot of people who've seen a lot of stuff. There's a lot of people who probably are not of sound mind who've seen stuff, but there's, yeah. there's a lot of people who are just like, have a crazy story. Uh, if you want to uh, engage with us, yeah, just go to extrasfiles.tv. Uh, you can check out our company assembly 72, where that is a saving grace. We do a lot of um, fun comedy videos for brands. So thankful that I get to do some comedy because yeah. comedy doesn't really blend with uh, deliverance. So um, <laughs> really thankful that God oh, yeah, allowed me to balance, well. balance, balance it out. I'm sure there's a stand up routine, I can, you know, get into this at some point. But for now, <laughs> uh, it's a serious topic. And I definitely, you know, we're, we, we recognize that it's this, the show is not everyone's cup of tea. But if you like your tea, dark, ominous, and ultimately inspiring, <laughs> then take a drink. <laughs> well, you heard it here. And I hope you guys will listen to it. It's been a lot of a lot of, I will say it's fun to listen to. So even though it's not comedy fun, but it is fun to listen to. You're doing a great job, Ryan. And I hope you guys will engage with Ryan and his company.